Right here, I have two of the best selling action cameras and I've been using them for over a month and I want to share my thoughts on these two amazing cameras with all of you. I said amazing, but they're not perfect and we're going to talk about that too. I hope you're having an amazing day. My name is Otto and welcome back to another video. This camera is the new GoPro Hero 11 and this other one is the DJI Action 3. They are both action cameras with a big touch enable screen in the back which feels amazing to the touch when you're changing settings. I like the GoPro's menu a bit more, the settings have a short explanation of what they do, playback videos have detailed information about the settings that were used and four shortcuts can be customized on the main screen or have none at all. We also have a color front facing display on both cameras and this is extremely useful for vlogging, to use as a YouTube studio camera or to frame yourself when you're filming or taking selfie pictures. The Action 3 has the advantage here because this front facing display is actually touch enabled and with the GoPro 11, when you press the front screen, nothing will ever happen. So not being able to adjust the settings when you're facing yourself can be a little bit frustrating. Both cameras can shoot regular videos, time lapses, hyperlapses, and slow motion. We can also take JPEG or RAW pictures with them. I really don't like taking pictures with these cameras. There's quite a bit of distortion going on and pictures are going to be okay depending on the situation, but the GoPro seems to do a better job with the dynamic range. These cameras can also be used as a webcam on your computer and there is also an app that you can use on your smartphone and this will allow you to do firmware updates, you can live stream on different platforms and you can control the camera with the app. In terms of weights and size, they are very similar. The GoPro is just a bit taller than the Action 3 and they both weigh around 150 grams. Both cameras are waterproof the GoPro can go underwater up to 10 meters and the Action 3 up to 16 meters without using any special case. The GoPro mounting system remains the same with the flip down fingers at the bottom, but one thing I don't like is that it doesn't stay rigid when you mount it, so the horizon level might not be so consistent all the time. The Action 3 has the same magnetic mechanism from the Action 2 that I really like and it feels secure and strong. The mounting system is fully compatible with GoPro accessories and with the Action 3 you also get this protective case and this will not only protect your camera but it will also allow you to mount the Action 3 in a vertical position just like this. The advantage of having this magnetic mount is that you can set up the camera from one place to another in just a few seconds. The GoPro 11 chips with their new high performance battery called Enduro battery and battery life is around 60 to 80 minutes shooting at 4K. With the Action 3 you get an extreme battery that has about the same size and capacity but it will last for a longer time. And I'm not talking about a few minutes. Testing both cameras at the same time with the same settings and on different days I had to replace the GoPro battery when I still had a lot of battery left on my Action 3 and according to my tests, the battery on the Action 3 will run somewhere between 90 and 120 minutes. Both batteries are replaceable, the battery for the GoPro is less expensive at $25 or you can even find a 2-pack for $40 which is a great deal. The battery for the Action 3 is $40, so it's going to last longer, but it's going to be more expensive. If buying extra batteries is not what you want, it is possible to charge both cameras with something like a power bank and use them at the same time. The Action 3 and the GoPro 11 have pretty good internal microphones, but I feel that the Action 3 does a better job and here is an example. More and more. If you want to use an external microphone, you can do so with both cameras, but you will need to buy a microphone adapter. 
When the DJI Action 3 was released, it did not have 10-bit color available, but DJI changed that with a recent firmware update. I wonder why it didn't have that feature to begin with, just like the GoPro did from the beginning. Anyway, bottom line is that both cameras do support 10-bit color. In terms of image quality, I am going to say that I'm quite happy with both cameras. Looking at different video clips one by one, you will probably agree with me that they look quite good. And I had, and I still have, a lot of trouble selecting the video clips that I like the most. With the GoPro, I feel that the videos came out with more saturations on the colors even when I was shooting with a flat color profile. But I also feel that the GoPro does a better job handling the shadows and the highlights at the same time. The Action 3, on the other hand, seems to have a more natural look on the videos that I shot. But then the GoPro seems to have an advantage when shooting people. The skin tones and texture are more flattering than with the Action 3, but that's not to say that the Action 3 is doing a bad job. Both cameras can shoot at 4K up to 120 frames per second, and that's going to be great for a slow motion video clips. But if you want super slow motion, the GoPro 11 can shoot 240 frames per second at 2.7K, and it looks quite good in my opinion. The Action 3 can shoot 240 frames per second, but only at 1080p. The GoPro 11 has another advantage over the Action 3 with the resolution. It can shoot at 5.3K up to 60 frames per second, so you're going to get some extra detail in your videos. Is there a huge difference? I would say not really, and most of the time I keep using 4K and that's plenty enough for what I do. One thing that caught my attention is that the GoPro 11 now has a new sensor that allows shooting in an 8 to 7 aspect ratio. Using this aspect ratio has a few limitations, for example, you can use horizon level or 120 frames per second, but this aspect ratio will let you crop and reframe your video to horizontal or vertical mode. The Action 3 and the GoPro 11, just like their previous generations, they do not perform very well in low light situations. You're definitely going to get some noise on your video, especially if you're going to use a higher ISO. I like to set a maximum ISO of 800 on either camera. You can go higher, but it just doesn't make sense to have so much noise on your videos. These two cameras do have an electronic stabilization system. On the GoPro 11, it is called Hyper Smooth, and on the Action 3, it's called Rock Steady, and they both work very well. We also have on both cameras a horizon balancing system which will keep your video horizon straight, even if you're tilting the camera to the left or the right. There is one common problem that the two cameras have with the stabilization when there isn't enough light. The videos will have some kind of a small vibration glitch effect and this effect is more intense the less light that you have. I think that the electronic stabilization relies on having higher shutter speeds which you only get when there is plenty of light. So to avoid this, the only way is to turn off the stabilization and maybe use a gimbal. One of the things that I like about the GoPro 11 is that we get more options than what we get on the Action 3 for more advanced users. For example, we can select the sharpness level to low, medium, or high. We can also select the area to set the exposure and lock the exposure. And without this feature, a shot like this where I want to focus on the Freedom Tower would not be possible. The same shot with the Action 3 is not possible because the Action 3 is setting the exposure on the rest of the frame instead of the Freedom Tower. The lens cover can be replaced on both cameras and this makes it easy to use ND filters. I've been using the brand Freewell for all my cameras and drones. They are high quality, they are not expensive, and they will give you very good results. They are not waterproof, but they are necessary if you want to follow the 180 degree rule. The GoPro retail price is $500, but Amazon has it at $400. You can get it for less at GoPro's website if you buy their subscription for one year. I did this last year with no issues when I bought the GoPro 10, but when I tried to buy the GoPro 11, it was 
a nightmare. I had so many issues with their website. Customer service tried to help, but they were useless. So buying it at Amazon was the best choice. The Action 3 has a lower price at $330. DJI also sells an adventure combo at $440. And this is the one I got for myself. It comes with two extra batteries, this cool battery case that lets you charge all three batteries and can be used as a power bank to charge other devices. You can store two microSD cards over here and the Adventure Combo also comes with this extension rod that extends up to one meter and a half. So I just want to ask you to please hit that like button and leave a comment below. The links to the products are going to be in the video description so you can check them out. I hope you have an amazing day and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.